Good afternoon, folks. This is Kimberly Jessica reporting in live today from Hollywood, California on the Glam Reports radio show on iHeartRadio. And, you know, we just had the iHeartRadio uh, awards this weekend, and everybody that was anybody was out and about sharing all the amazing things that they're doing in the music industry, in the movie industry, and it was basically the you know, the audio version of the Oscars, basically, for radio. So we were really excited that that took place this weekend. And we're back on back on the bandwagon today on Manic Monday with Kimberly Jessica. And I'm really excited to be interviewing a gentleman that was born and raised in Los Angeles. He's been extensively involved in writing, producing, and directing, and actively involved in film projects for the last couple of years. At 19, he went on to have his first short film uh, titled Our Lost Translation, and it was screened at the L.A. Short Festival. He completed his, his degree at San Diego State University in film, and he finished at top of his class, and now he's here in Los Angeles. He directed, produced, and wrote The Last Wish, which screened at a number of film festivals and picked up several awards, including the Sierra Nevada Award at the 2012 Mountain Film Awards. In 2013, he directed, produced, and wrote the feature called Misogynist. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I never say misogynist, misogynist, whatever, tomato, tomato, where he was awarded Best Narrative Feature at the Los Angeles Underground Film Festival. Highly prolific. He continues to write, direct, and, and, and produce quality film at an outstanding rate. He's under 30. He's nicknamed the Italian Cowboy uh, in Hollywood, and he is part Italian, part German. Ladies and gentlemen, I have none other than the Michael Matteo Rossi on the line. Michael, are you there? I am certainly there. How are you doing? That was <laughs> like endorsement right there. I was, uh, definitely like, liking hearing that, showering that on me. I liked it. Isn't that beautiful? You're like, who's that guy, right? <laughs> who, who is that? I want to meet him. That's That's for sure. I like him. I totally want to meet him, too. I mean, I'm talking to him, so I'm, like, in the red zone. Like, I'm in the black right now. I'm, like, super stoked. How are you today, Mike, doing on this manic Monday here in um, March of 2017? I'm doing great, actually. I'll tell you something. I actually like Mondays. I know that's weird, but I'm telling you, it's, it's business day starting again. I'm getting those emails. I'm getting that progress going. So I, I say bring it with Mondays. You know? Love it. Love it. So, Michael, tell us, you know, you're under 30. You're doing some amazing things in Hollywood. Tell us a little bit in, in a couple of seconds or less on how you got started and what was your passion? What made you say, wake up one day and say, you know what, this is my life. This is what I want it to be. And there's no, there's not even, I'm, I'm taking no prisoners. Well, you know, it's interesting because in my early teens, I actually did theater. I acted. I did theater. I was in a bunch of stuff like that. And around 15 or 16, I started to get into writing, creative writing, stories, all of that. And then around 18, I shifted towards wanting to direct my own written work. And I didn't want to wait till after college to start making movies. So sophomore year, 19, got a couple people together, and we shot a four-minute short. Got into a festival, got good acclaim. People couldn't believe that I was 19 and I did that. And uh, I pretty much never looked back. I used that momentum, and I went like a, a freight train and just kept kept plugging it back in and just networking with people and bringing more people on and, and the whole bit and just tried to make as many, you know, quality films as possible. Wow. Well, you know what? You're definitely banging them out. Um, you know, and that's, that's amazing. You have a couple of uh, projects on the table now. You want to share your projects with us and tell us how, what's going on with those and how we can check it out? Sure. Well, my uh, my most recent completed feature is called Sable, and it actually premiered at the Hollywood Real Film Festival in uh, in Beverly Hills uh, two weeks ago, and we we had a good turnout. It was it was an afternoon show, which is always tricky, but we had we had about eighty people come. It was it was really nice, and people seemed to really like it. You know, afterwards they gave a little speech thanking everybody the whole bit. So that was nice. It was actually nominated for a, a People's or Audience Choice Award uh, at that festival. And it's going to be released uh, in April, actually. So people wow. can see it. 
most likely, you know, it'll be on Amazon, Hulu, you know, you can get the DVD of it, uh, maybe even Netflix, knock on wood, you know, but people will be able to see it then. So that's, uh, that's pretty exciting. So uh, I'm very proud of it. It's probably my best work to date, if I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. And right now, I'm actually in the super, super early stages of prepping for my next feature film as well. Wow. You know, Michael, what advice would you give up-and-coming filmmakers? Because you've not only made films, you've been in profit mode. What, what are some secrets that you can drop? What are some great nuggets, Michael? Because you, you're definitely that guy. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? It, it really, I know it sounds cliche and people throw this word around too. But, you know, it's two major things. It's hustle and networking. It's, it's mm-hmm. being good at what you do. It's, look, if you're, if you're a writer, write every day. If you're a director, try to go out and just shoot something every day. Just have that mindset and just network. Go to events. You know, social media, a lot of people don't like it, but it's, it's a beautiful tool because you do get to engage with people and show your work and share your work and all of that. But network with like-minded individuals, like-minded people. If comedy is your bit, boom, surround yourself with people who that's, that's you know, that's their forte. It's drama, same thing. But just network with people. Keep trying to make content. Build your brand. Build whatever you're good at. You know, YouTube. People, people, uh, you know, the beauty of YouTube. Make a little two-minute short with your friends. Put that up on YouTube. Have people watch it. Share it. Network. And you know what? You, you're going to end up meeting the right people. Word of mouth is still very strong. And that's something that I would definitely recommend. You know, Michael, what if somebody says to you, well, you know what, I have no money. I have nothing to put, you know, I have no money. I don't have a camera. How can I start shooting this? What would your advice be, Michael? You know, that's always, that's the Achilles heel. That's the trickiest thing for, for indie filmmakers. And I understand that, you know, it's, it's the money situation. It's the, you know, uh, not everybody's going to do everything for, for free and, and everything like that. But, um, you know, there are, I've never personally used it, but, there are crowdfunding sites like Indiegogo, Kickstarter, all of that, where you kind of give your proposal, tell tell what your film is about, and people can, you know, essentially donate to you uh, to make the film. And I know people that have seriously raised like fifty grand um, off mm-hmm. of that stuff. That's that's uh, that's something. But also networking with people. Like I'm telling you, you you'd be you'd be surprised that there are these people, you know, usually wealthy, obviously, that'll be like, hey, you know what, I believe in their project, all that, let me throw let me throw a little money their way and make it happen. But um, there's no one right way to fund a mm-hmm. film. It's just the more people you know, the better, if I'm being very honest with you. That's you. That, 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 that's sound advice. Michael, who are, are some of the people that you've worked with that have influenced your work and what you're doing? That's a, it's a good question. You know, the, the two male lead actors of my last film have been, uh, actors that I've worked with a couple times before and they, they're amazing. One of them is John Burdell, who was the lead in my first feature, Misogynist, and he's one of the leads, um, also in Sable. And he's, he's a guy, he's, uh, he's just one of the best actors that I've ever worked with. A true class act just awesome he's uh he's a little older than me so i kind of look up to him a bit but he's he's just a genius and the other one is somebody that i met when i was 23 something like that and he was about 19 and his name's chris petrovsky and we met when i was co-directing a found footage uh horror film and we just really hit it off he's one of my best friends uh, right now, too, he's like a brother to me, and he's one of the hardest working actors that I've ever met. He's 25. He's a series regular on Madam Secretary, you know, on CBS, hmm. lives in New York, the whole bit. But those two, um, I love, and I'm gonna work with. I'm gonna work with them for forever. I'm telling you. I mean, they're they're those type of people that I I really you know, see, see just, a, they're, they're my muse, you know, they're my acting wow. muse. When I have, when I have my, um, my script and when I know what, what film I'm going to be doing, I always talk 
talk to them about it and see, all right, is there a role that I could see them playing? And there usually is. So I'd say in terms of actors, because I'm an actor's director, um, those would be top of my list. Mm, wow. So what what producers would you say, producers or producers or directors, known producers or directors that have influenced your style of the way your films are, are produced and directed? Um, now, are you asking, like, people that I personally work with or people that, like, I've, like bigger people, like Steven Spielberg? Bigger people, you know, like, who, like, who, like for me, okay, exactly. you know, when I look at someone, I think, you know, Viola Davis or I think Angela Bassett sure. or I think Meryl Streep or Tom Cruise or Leo. Those are the people that, that move me. Absolutely, all great people. Um, so I would say in terms of kind of directors, uh, some that, well, one that has just, really influenced me is this director Stanley Kubrick he did he did The Shining he did Clockwork Orange mm. he's a he's a genius you know just in terms of his his technique he's brilliant now some of the some of the newer people are, or the the people that work now are um, Christopher Nolan Dan Aronoff love him Spielberg of course is great um, uh, Quentin Tarantino can't go wrong with him mm-hmm. uh, and let's see, David Fincher, the guy who did Fight Club mm-hmm. and, and, and all that, um, he's, he's great as well. So those people are, are really people that I, um, I just see, and they know their craft so well. That's the thing. They know what they're doing, have a vision. They have a vision, and they're innovative. And also, in terms of just actors, I think, honestly, two of the best working actors right now that are in their kind of 30s, 40s, to me, is uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy. Mm-hmm. Those two mm-hmm. are... I love those two. I fell in yeah, love no, with Tom Hardy recently. Oh, you see Taboo or something like that? Or, or he, There's a sitcom he has... that he has going. There's a sitcom. What's that sitcom oh. he has going, Michael? It's like new. I think it's on USA or Sci-Fi. Yeah. He's, he's a genius. I mean, both of them are amazing. And, and you know, it's interesting because, uh, you know, they were both in that film, The Revenant. And the interesting thing is, I mean, DiCaprio was great. He's great in everything. But I actually thought Tom Hardy did a better job than even DiCaprio in that film. So, now, wasn't Tom Hardy the good guy that was at the base, or was he the evil one that, that Leo was, was trying to kill? He was the evil one. He was, he was okay. the one that, he was the evil that one killed that. Leo's son. Correct. So he's just so good at what he does. He's just so good. And, you know, it's something that influences me as a director. When I see mm. that, is, that is the quality. Um, and, and then, of course, if, if I just have to name a couple others, the, uh, four big names for me that, you know, killed it in the 70s, 80s, all of that would be, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, mm. Jack mm-hmm. Nicholson, and Dustin Hoffman. Those four um, are amazing. De Niro and yeah. Chick Pacino did it, did it. You had me at De Niro and Chick Pacino. Those two men right there, not yeah. to mention De Niro was like a stunner. He was like a total looker in his early day. Like, people slept on how fly and good-looking Robert De Niro was. I mean, he was fly, seriously fly. Pacino had me at Godfather, you know, and then Serpico. And then, you know, Carlito's way, De Niro had me, oh, you know, it's like, yeah, like, <laughs> those Italian men, I mean, how can you go wrong with an Italian guy? Italian, <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the interesting thing, what, what also a film that I love is um, Heat, and both of them. Oh, man, you know, that's the first time they actually worked on set together, was on Heat. Right. Was you know that? Yeah, on was on set on Heat. So. Yeah, yeah, and, um, and you can't go wrong with Tarantino with Kill Bill. That you know, he had yeah. me at Kill Bill and Dust Till Dawn. I mean, you, yep. you're, and Christopher Nolan with the Supermans and Henry Cavill. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't, you know, you're, you're picking some names that light my fire. Seriously, you're picking <laughs> names of another one is Andy Garcia. He slept on too. Oh yeah. So it's like, oh, yeah. yeah, you you <laughs> you went you you like drew all the big guns, uh, Michael. That's how I know you're gonna be like a big gun. You drew you didn't draw some rifles. You just you took the big guns out. Those are my boys. Those are people that I have crazy respect for. That if I ever met them in person, I mean, I I, I've I met De Niro and I've worked with him. He's amazing. Yeah, well, you're you're lucky. You're very lucky. He's just 
He genius. stays in character the whole time. He stays in character yep. the whole time when you work with him. He's uh, he's something special, I'll tell you that much. He's a professional. He's a staunch professional. That Leo man is a staunch professional. I, I, I am his biggest, 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 biggest fan, and he's just mm-hmm. – I love him. I love Robert. He's amazing. He's yeah. one of the greats, and I'm glad. I'm glad I got to meet him in real life. He is fantastic, you know. So that's um, yeah. Th- those ones are the ones uh, that I love. You know that. So Michael, in 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 wrapping up, what is what are some other things you'd like the world to know about you and what you're doing? And tell us how we can get in touch with you and follow you. Uh. Well, first of all, thank you for this. This is actually really nice, and, and uh, I love talking about, you know, what influences me and all of that. But what people should know is that, um, you know, I do a lot of dark films. I do a lot of a lot of disturbing films and all that, but I'd like to think I'm a hell of a nice guy. You know, that, that's the thing. People will come up to me and be like, Mike, you know, like, how the hell did you write all these twisted uh you know, scripts and things, and it's just, I, I mean, that's the stuff that interests me, you know, it's its just, it's the stuff that I think people remember, but I'm just, I'm very passionate, I love telling stories, I love telling stories on the medium of film, you know, I love that, it's reached by so many people, and I just, I love to see my work up there, I love that film is collaborative, I love that it's a mm. team, um, it's, it's a team effort, you know. Even though your director's captain of the ship, you got all your crewmates, you got all your people, and we all have that same goal of making the best film possible. So, you know, that's that's there, and I'm just I want to keep making films. I want to keep, you know, when I see when I see those award ceremonies and all of that, you know, what, whatever people may say about them, it's it's a motivator. It's a motivator to be like, all right. When am I going to be there? When am I going to be at the grandest stage of them all? So, um, you know, that's it. And how people can find me, you know, if you just you look me up, I have uh, I have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, just Michael Mateo Rossi. Uh, the Twitter's uh, at the at Michael Mateo Ro, R-O. Um, and I'm on all that. Feel free to follow me, like me, whatever. Um, and you can see I, I post pretty regularly on those, so you can kind of keep updated with uh, with what I'm doing. Wow. Well, thank you so much, you know, for, um, you know, taking the time to interview with us mm-hmm. today. You've been on our, you know, one of the people to watch list since last June. We just didn't say anything. We're, we quietly watch people. We don't say anything. And finally, when we thank wanted you. to touch them, we reach out and touch them, you know. So, you know, I thank you for being the way shower for young people um, that are, you know, want to shake and move and, and get things done. And, and you know, you're, you're, you've got hustle muscle, and I have to applaud that. That's amazing. And I can't wait to see what That's more so comes much. from you. And I actually hope to, you know, work with you one day because, you know, this business is a oh, big yeah. circle, and you just never know. You never know. That's the beauty of it. And, no, I, I really appreciate this. Um to, to everybody, thank you, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll definitely be in touch. Absolutely, Michael, and we'd love to have you back too, because you know we have several radio shows, so we'd love to have you back in the future. Uh, anytime. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Michael, for interviewing with us. And this is Kimberly Jessica, guys, reporting in live today, the day after the iHeart uh, Radio ceremony, and he's our first interview of the day since that iHeart Radio ceremony. So, it's a lot of great interviews going on on iHeart Radio, and this is one of them. Guys, check out Michael Rossi, Michael Mateo Rossi. You can catch him on Twitter. You can catch him on Facebook. You can catch him on Instagram. Follow him with him. See what he's up to because he's definitely up to big things. He's definitely iHeart Radio's in our radio show's choice of top new producers to watch, up-and-coming powerhouse producers and directors to watch uh, in 2017 and beyond. He is that guy. Thank you so much again, guys, for listening in to the Glam Reports radio show on iHeartRadio, and thank you so much, Michael, for being with us today. We enjoy your day, my friend. Thank you so much. Likewise. Thank you so much. This is Kimberly Jessica Live, coming in live today. Stay tuned, guys, as we play our next song coming up in the next few minutes. Take care, guys.